Today let's explore the old and new features of a layer docker. Let's get started. I have moved the layer docker. This way you will be able to see better. Let's review a few basics. You can modify the opacity of any active layer. To rename a layer, double click on it or use the F2 key. Using the up arrow you can move a layer up and using the down arrow you can move it back down. Click on this button to duplicate a layer or mask. As you can see, just by clicking on it, it duplicated my layer. Use the trash bin button to remove a layer. If you click on this little arrow right next to the plus sign button, it will open the layers menu. This menu lists all the different types of layer you can create. Paint layer, group layer, clone layer, vector layer, filter layer, fill and file layer. It also shows what type of masks you can create. Transparency mask, filter mask, colorize mask and transform mask. Finally, it allows you to create a local selection. To check the properties of your active layer, click on the button View or Change the Layer Properties. You must click on the button's icon, not on the little arrow located right next to it. This button opens the Layers Properties panel. In the panel, I can see the properties of my active layer. I can see that I am on my Visage layer, that the opacity is set at 100% and the blending mode is set to normal. There is of course much more information on this panel as you can see. Let's click on the little arrow by the icon this time to see what happens. This little arrow opens a different panel where you will be able to manage your layers. You can also right click anywhere on a layer to make this panel appear. Now make sure to experiment with some of these options, for example try the layer style option. This is very useful to add effects on top of your layer. I created a while back a tutorial on how to create a beautiful text using some of these effects. I'll add a card on the upper corner of this video and a link in the description box if you're interested. Time to see how we can manage the layers. Click this button to adjust the size of your layer thumbnails and manage what additional information is displayed on the layers. So let's look at the sliders first. The very top slider allows you to modify the size of your thumbnails. The second slider can only be used if you have created a group like the one I created for this demonstration. This slider allows you to change the indentation of your layers within the group. Basically, you can increase or decrease the space that exists between the edges of a thumbnail and docker. Alright, let's move on. We are still on the layer visage. If I click on this drop-down menu called Blending Info Style, I am given four options. None, Simple, Balanced, Detailed. This drop-down menu is where I can manage the blending and opacity information text of my layer. When the mode is set to known, no information will be shown inside the layers panel. Even if I modified the opacity of the layer or the blending mode, nothing will happen. Let's click on Simple and repeat the same test to see what will happen. I am going to decrease the opacity of the layer first. As soon as I go under 100%, the information shows on the layer. Now let's try a new blending mode. 
Same thing here, as soon as I change my layer from normal to another blending mode, the information is displayed. Now here is the kicker. As soon as I reset the opacity to 100%, the opacity information disappears. Same for the blending mode. As soon as I return to the normal mode, the blending information disappears. To summarize, and you are welcome to take a screenshot, the only time you will see some information displayed is when your layer's opacity is less than 100% and when your layer is not set to a normal blending mode. Now let's see what the balanced mode is going to do for us. If I change the blending mode of my layer from normal to any other blending modes, the information of a new blending mode appears. If I decrease the opacity, the information appears as well. However, in this case, if I return the opacity to 100%, the information will stay, while before the opacity information disappeared when I reset everything at 100%. Now please note that as soon as I change the blending mode back to normal, everything disappears. Both blending mode information and opacity information. However, as soon as I change the blending mode from normal to something else, our 100% opacity information is back with the blending mode information. Before we move on to the next mode, I would like to talk about this opacity slider. The first thing you need to know is that it will act the same whatever mode we are on, simple, balanced or detailed. I am going to set a blending mode and modify the active layer's opacity. Now look what happens to the information text. As I move the slider toward the left, it reduces the contrast and visibility of the information text. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I wish we had some type of uh, color options uh, for text formatting. That would be great uh, to create a more distinct uh, separation between uh, the uh, text information and the layer name. The final mode is called Detailed, so let's click on it to activate it. When you click on the detailed option, all layers are displaying the blending and opacity information. Now earlier using either the simple or balanced mode, only the layers that had some type of modification would display that information. For instance, let's say that you modified three layers. Only these three layers would display text information. However, if you only modified one layer, only that layer would display text information. Back to our detailed mode. Here you can change the blending mode and opacity of all layers and each layer will display the specific modification you have done to it. All right, we are almost done. We are going to look now at this inline option. Right now, the information text in our layer is below the layer's name. If I want the information to be displayed on a single line, I need to check the inline box. However, since I prefer to see the text on two lines, I'll keep that box unchecked. The last thing I want to show you is the checkbox for selecting layers option. If you are using a tablet with a no keyboard, you will love this. Let me demonstrate. The box is unchecked. When I click on each layer, nothing happens. When I check the option, checkboxes appear. Now I can check or uncheck layers. Now some of you wonder why we need to select the layers. 
You select layers when you want to do something specific to all of them at once. Here for instance, if I select the layer where the hair is located and the layer where the face is located, I can now use a transform tool and increase the size of my character's head. Both layers will increase at the same time, allowing the proportions to stay the same. The filter feature is the one feature that most of us didn't know existed. <laughs> Let me show you. You can filter your layers by name or color code. To add a color code to a layer, right click on the layer and choose a color. Left click on the next layer, right click again and choose another color. Repeat the process until you have all layers color coded. Click on the filter button. If you only want to work on the yellow layers, for instance, you can just unselect all the other colors and only the yellow colored layers will remain on the docker. Now don't worry, the other layers are not erased, they are just hidden. Maybe you want to work on the red and the yellow layers only. To undo a color, just right click on the layer and click on this clear square. You can select all layers, right click and again click on the clear square. All the color codes have disappeared. Finally, you can find a specific layer. Type the name of the layer in the search box and it will appear. To get back all the layers, click on the button again. As you can see, the icon has changed. Now the button looks like a B. Just click a reset filters and all the layers will be back. We are done for today. Next time we'll take a break from exploring the new features of Krita 5.2 and learn how to create a beautiful pencil art. I'll show you how to make the most of your pencil brush. Until then, have a wonderful time creating art. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Au revoir et à bientôt.